welcome to the Elements of Whiskey podcast, where we talk about whiskies, we try them, we sample them, and we talk about the stories that inspired the whiskies. Exactly. And today, my name is Lucia. And my name is Max. Yeah. Uh, way ahead of you. You're way ahead <laughs> of me. Yeah, normally, normally we have a very s- strong choreographed intro, because normally we do it in, in Dutch, yeah. but this episode is in English, and that is because Sorry, we had... Intro just yeah, the whole intro is just completely different than normal. Yeah, yeah. out of the window. Yep. What do we do normally? Normally, we have a weekly whiskey podcast where we sample a whiskey, we'll talk about it, and just have a great time. But there was something very awesome going on because there was a whiskey festival in Eimuiden, a place in the Netherlands, and it's called Whiskey and Rum at Sea. And you had the amazing opportunity to go there and have an interview with our very special guest for the day. Yes, and we were talking about no one less yeah. than Graham Cool, current master distiller at Dingle Distillery. Yes. And we thought like, okay, the whole interview is in, in English. So why not just make a small special episode completely in English for our English speaking mm-hmm. audience at home? Max, so, yeah. Which whiskey are we sampling? Yes, that's a funny story because during the interview we are trying three different whiskies. The first one we're trying was the Dingle Single Malt, the first whiskey in the core range. Then we sampled the batch number six, the li- latest release within the, the, the whole batch series, 100% matured on port casks. Mm-hmm. Very, very special whiskey that we had and the one that Lucia has in her glass currently. And the last one that I sadly don't have here at the moment, but we have a very gr- great placeholder, but mm-hmm. we were drinking the festival bottling. And what they did is they bottled exactly the same recipe as the core range single this malt. This one, right? So it was um, this, 61% this. PX sherry cask and 39% bourbon casks. Mm-hmm. And this blended into, a, I believe, of like bottled at 46.3% ABV. This one. Yes. So we had three very great whiskies to, to try during this whole uh, interview. Again, um, you're saying we, but <laughs> you mean you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we go straight back to Whiskey and Rum at sea just a few hours before all doors opened and all the people came in and enjoying the whiskies. And we sat down with no one less than Graham Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. But I'm sitting here with Graham. How are you? Thanks for being here, first of all. I'm very good, yes, yeah. Enjoy my time in the Netherlands. Yes. Uh, first time visiting or? Uh, second time, but the first time was only briefly. We were in Amsterdam for, for a weekend, mm-hmm. a wet weekend in February it was. Yes. So, so we, we saw quite a lot of the pubs and restaurants. But not Mostly so the inside. Of the Mostly inside. It was very wet, I remember. Uh, but you're, uh, you're currently living in Ireland? Of course, near Dingle, I imagine. Yes, yeah, living in Dingle. Okay. I made the move across. Dingle is from Scotland. If, okay. if, if nobody's picked up the accent, yeah. it's not <laughs> not an Irish one. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's definitely Scottish. So we moved across the almost almost two years ago now Okay. to Dingle, which is on the far west coast of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Almost as far as you can go. And before we talk about Dingle, I'm really excited. Like you have been working in like the whiskey industry for 25 years, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, before 20, 25 plus plus 2 now, so. Okay. So 25 in 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 Scotch whiskey and then mm-hmm. 2 years in in Irish so. And where have you been working before? What distilleries uh, and, and, and as what role did you have? Yeah, well, I started way back, um, 1994, and uh, my first job was with William Grant and Sons at, in Dufftown, who mm. they own, family own, uh, Glenfiddich, Balvenie and Caninvi distilleries. So, so I started there, actually on the bottling side of things, I was bottling Glenfiddich because they did everything in-house at okay. that time. And then, uh, you know, I did my time there and then... It, I got the opportunity to move into the distillation side. Okay. And over a few years, I took over Glenfiddich, Balvenie and Caninvi, which is the, the third distillery on the site. So it was great, great experience, mm-hmm. great learning from it. And that wasn't the only Scottish distilleries you worked at? You no. Had, you no, made a move? I made a move from there. Yeah, I move every 11 years or so, <laughs> or 14 years. Okay. That's my, my cycle, or okay. it seems like that. Um, so in 2005, moved slightly further north in Speyside to Glen Murray Distillery mm-hmm. in Elgin and uh, took on the role as kind of dual role as distillery manager and master distiller. 
Okay. For, for Glen Muddy. And now we start this new cycle of uh, 11 years at <laughs> yeah, Dingle. Yeah, oh, hopefully I've got 11 years left in me. <laughs> Maybe a few more after that. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, nice to spend a, a decent amount of time at a distillery because you get the chance to see what you've done come through mm-hmm. and, and you know, be, be released. So it's nice to, to work with other people's work. You know, you inherit the work of the predecessor and, and then hopefully you, you, you add make, something to you it. You make your own yes. mark and you make your own decisions and then and hopefully you hand it over or hand it on in, in good fettle for the for the next and this year there's been the first whiskey from dingle in the core range is this something that was your idea or was this something that is from your predecessor uh, no i think it was a natural progression for dingle you know we always knew that we would release a core expression or yes. a regular expression it was just a matter of the timing and mm-hmm. there's lots of factors that come into it mm-hmm. you know you have to have the stock profile available yes in the back on the back burner to, yeah. to release because previously we released batch releases which are in some ways a bit simpler because it's it's a one-off batch and you don't have to repeat it so you don't you can use stock that you have and then you don't have to find the same stock again yes. so, so is, it, is it easier to 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 do these batches than doing a core it's it, from a whiskey release point of view well from a production and, yeah. and construction point of view it's maybe easier you don't have to have that long-term planning but mm-hmm. on the other hand it's fairly work intensive to keep changing batches all the time and, and yes. you know down the chain you working with your suppliers and your your customers to chop and change all the time is creates a, a you know creates a, a lot of work downstream right. of the distillery so, so it's, it's no it's nice to have but it's also nice to for D- dingle to make its mark and put a whiskey out there that is there for for the future you know i think we use the phrase here to stay so yes. it, it's here to stay it won't it will evolve you know it, yeah. but Certainly, I would say maybe three, four years of, of this core expression, and then we'll, we'll maybe tweak some, a little bit. some tweaks or, t- or twists to it. I'm really excited. You're saying, like, it's here to stay, so let's try it. At least that's what I... Yes. Uh, Luckily enough, I have one to hand. So this is the <laughs> this is the the Dingle single malt, as we call it. So it's very simple. It's, it has no other name apart from that. And we changed the packaging. We'll maybe see later mm-hmm. the batch releases that we've we've done up till now. But uh, this was quite a quite a change to us. You know, a big bold blue label and something to to, to stand out. You know, and it's got the the Ren Man on the front, our symbol. So he's and what is what does the symbol stand for? Well, he's got a checkered history. In the past, a kind of spiritual festival. They they would go and chase the, the bird the wren okay and catch the wren because they thought it uh, was associated with evil spirits okay so they would doing that they would dress up and it's kind of evolved and dingle town is one of the few places that still celebrate it on the 26th of december they okay <laughs> they dress up and then go around the town and it's another irish excuse for a for, for, a for celebration party, yeah yeah they're, they're very good at so. <laughs> but uh, yeah it's, it's a lovely symbol of dingle uh, and it you know it does help the, the bottle stand out so let's uh, let's try it yes i'll uh, let you have a little hold of that and uh We'll, we'll have a glass of uh, the, the Dingle single malt. First thing that really is just interesting to me is like it's, it's 46.3% yes. uh, volume, alcohol by volume. Why the 0.3? I'd probably like to sit here and say, oh, it, it, it's the absolute sweet spot for, for <laughs> the taste. But no, I, I'll have to be honest and say it was just to make a little bit of differentiation from our okay. batch releases, which are, are 46.5. The reason for it being around that strength is that it's, it's non-chill filtered. Mm-hmm. So obviously it's, the whiskey's coming out of the cask got cask strength and we are we're adding our own water to that mm-hmm. but we don't go down too far because if you reduce the strength too far you have to go through chill filtration which can strip out some of the character of the whiskey so so we're trying to keep as much of the in it. the flavor in there um because dingle we pride ourselves on using only first fill casks okay mm-hmm. uh, so although we're you know a relatively young distillery and um, we're coming up for nine years old in mm-hmm. december the whiskies are you know they pack a punch for their age mm-hmm. and it's Mainly because the first fill, the first fills, you know, the first fill sherries, bourbons. So first use sherries and bourbons. We were using them for the first time. I'm used to holding a glass of whiskey in my hands and just enjoying a glass, but this is a very great opportunity to talk with a master distiller. Like, how could I appreciate a dingle the same way as you could, like, or you appreciate it? Or like, could you talk me through like how you sit down and how you enjoy a glass? Yeah, I'm not one for telling people what to do okay. with their whiskey because, you know, I think it's a personal thing, personal experience. And mm-hmm. we all drink whiskey at different times and different different experiences, different uh, situations. So so it very much, it's really do what you want to do. You know, the, the whiskey's there. Hopefully it's been prepared in as, as good a way as we can. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a this is a mid-strength whiskey at, at okay. 46. So some people will drink it neat, mm-hmm. will, will not need to reach for water. 
but uh, others will will want to add something to it. Mm-hmm. And again, I've no there's no, no right or wrong. No, way. no qualms about somebody putting even a lump of ice in it. If, okay. if that's how how you want to do it, then then it's fine. But mm-hmm. with any whiskey, I think the first thing, obviously, your nose will tell you okay. quite a, an awful lot. So mm-hmm. do take a little time to have a, a sniff of the whiskey, okay. and also pour it. And let it sit for a little while because it kind of needs time to breathe and just acclimatize. If the, if the bottle's been in a cold environment or, mm-hmm. uh, well, hopefully not a warm environment, you know, but uh, you know, generally you'll store your whiskey in a cool, cool place. Mm-hmm. So let it just warm up to, to room temperature. Mm-hmm. And then you'll get the, the volatiles, the real volatiles will be sitting there or, well, I can smell the whiskey from yeah, there. Yeah. So, so something's leaking out already. Uh-huh. So just, just go close and have a sniff and, and okay. don't go, don't dive in too much because with this whiskey it's fine, but if you have a cask, strength whiskey in your glass then <laughs> the, the the alcohol will will burn pe- burn the inside of your nose are you a burning yeah. sensation so you'll not smell anything after that so so yeah just try so carefully and just have a sniff and, and let your let your imagination go and, and let your brain think well what's this going to taste like okay and, and you could almost then tell if you want to add water or not as well so if it's if it's quite sharp and as i say if you if you if you feel it's quite it, intense it packs a punch then you, you're probably thinking to yourself i'll, I'll maybe need to Add some water. Try it. But again, once you've nosed, then just have a little sip mm-hmm. and uh, let the flavours just accumulate in your mouth. And sometimes it's, it's better to nose than sip, then go back to the nose again because once you've tasted it, you know, your your mouth is connected to your nose, so you will pick up different things. All right. The second time, but it's personal. Pers- if you like no, no. just to pick up the glass and have just a drink, well, just do that because. That's it's your whiskey. All right, let's uh, try it because I'm Slanch. really very excited. Slanch it. What do you think? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. To be honest, I would lie if I would tell that this is the first time I had a dingle. So <laughs> I really like it. What I find very amazing is like it is a very full body. It has it is it doesn't feel watery. It it has this really nice full body, very fruity. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm glad. Glad you like it. it you know, I, I constructed the whiskey knowing, obviously, that mm-hmm. this was going to be a, a permanent expression, a regular expression, and also that it was going to be you know, available in different different countries. So I tried to create a whiskey that would appeal to to a wider audience. Mm-hmm. You know, some of our, our batch releases are more, a little bit more. Um, On the wild side? Not so much wild, but <laughs> you know, I wouldn't expect everybody to like every batch release that we've done, and okay. because the life... Uh, what would be a dull place if they did? Yeah. But uh, for this, again, constructed with a, a you know a nice balance and a nice sweetness there, the fruitiness as you mentioned, and mm-hmm. that's coming from a combination of two cask types okay. that are contained within the whiskey. So this is this is obviously Dingle Dingle Spirit, which has then been matured fully for its full duration in a combination of Pedro Jimenez sherry casks and bourbon casks. Okay, so it's not a bourbon aged whiskey and then finished on. No, 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 it's just no, separately. No, which, you know, there is quite a lot of finishing done, and, and mm-hmm. some people just assume if they see sherry, they assume it's finished or port. Okay. They assume it's finished, but no. So this is full maturation, so it's spent, well, 60% of it, or 61% to be mm-hmm. very uh, precise. Very precise. Uh, spent its life in the Pedro Jimenez cask mm-hmm. and 39% in the ex bourbon. So it's heavier, heavier on the sherry. It's then got the, the most sherry content of any dingo release so far. Wow. And. What I'm just as a very whiskey geeky question, if you say like this is a core expression, meaning that you, you, you got this flavor profile you're working with and you want to keep this going, but you set like, okay, we want to do 61% like sherry and like 39% bourbon, doesn't that make it a very difficult job for you to keep this consistent? It does, you know, and when when I quote figures like sixty one percent, it's not to say that the you know we do still make this in batches. We don't, okay. uh, you know, we haven't made up enough whiskey for the next three years. Okay. It's still obviously evolving and maturing in 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 the warehouse. So mm-hmm. so this whiskey, although we say it will remain the same, it will it will it will be tweaked. It will be mm-hmm. adjusted uh, depending on how I feel the casks are coming through. Mm-hmm. So there may be a batch with fifty eight percent, okay, or fifty seven percent Pedro Jimenez. It will. It will Everybody. be slightly. All right. Uh, but again, the main aim is to try and retain that, that character, that flavor, because hopefully consumers will, will buy a bottle, finish it, and then come back and buy another bottle. And they're, they're, they're looking for a similar taste. They're yeah, exactly. They're, you know, it, 
they don't want it to be peated the next time they buy or non peated. Mm -hmm. Talking about peated, I heard stories whilst walking here yesterday about you introducing a peated whiskey, or like a peated expression from the distilleries you worked with previously. Is it safe to assume that in the near future, a peated dingle could maybe exist? I think it does exist, <laughs> albeit in a, in a young form okay. at the moment. It's not quite whiskey. Yeah, yeah, no. When I when I joined Dingle, I was fortunate to be given a very free hand to do what I wanted with <laughs> the spirit and the whiskey. So we've now made peated spirit twice. So okay. two years ago, and then this year we made a second mm -hmm. batch of the peated spirit. So, so maybe, you know, in, let's say, three, four, five years, you might see... Some of that being released as, as young dingle. And we're talking like a single malt, like a peated dingle, the obvious like Irish whiskey that, that y you probably previously couldn't try, a single pot still. Is that also something that is in the pipelines or yeah, that's about to release or is released in a batch form? Or We make we make single pot still as well as single malt. So single pot still is, is made from a different uh, set of ingredients. It's, it's made from malted barley and unmalted barley and, and other unmalted grains if, if you want to add them whereas single malt is 100% malted barley okay. so we do make the two styles single pot still is very traditional to Ireland mm -hmm. and dates back uh, many many years when there was heavy taxation put on malted barley mm -hmm. so the Irish as they as they would do they they looked for a, a, a loophole a loophole to to get round it and they obviously started adding in unmalted grain which predominantly would have been unmalted barley so it's 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 quite a different style and we've done again we've done limited edition releases uh, where we've currently had four pot still releases and there will be a, a fifth release next next year. And how is it for you as a Scottish master distiller taking like this this very it, I almost get this this playground feel like you were given a distillery and like do, do your thing. Yeah. Is is it is it this playground is it is it this is it so much fun and It's a bit like that because again you're coming to a distillery that that that, that, that time was probably 6 years old. So you're coming to a distillery that's on its way but but obviously not the finished article. And yeah. you know the way I look at it, I'm looking to organise Dingle and the spirit and the whiskey for the next 10, 15 years. So our releases in 10 years' time, we're, you have to think about that now. You, you don't turn up 10 years later and think, right, what will we uh, do well, today? Mm -hmm. You have to f have some form of plan, but that plan has to be flexible as well because you, things will change. Things will change, people will change. Uh, Flavour, like preferences? from the general public can change. H how do you steer this? How do you have like, ha do you have like this crystal ball in which you look and see like, okay, within 10 years, uh, everyone loves sherry or everyone loves, or yeah. is it, how, how do you make this plan based on what? It's difficult. Uh, we are fortunate, I think, because whiskey is a very traditional drink. Mm -hmm. So I think the the foundations of whiskey and the traditions will, will not change dramatically. You know, sherry matured whiskey, bourbon matured whiskey will always be the mainstay. Mm -hmm. But, it doesn't stop you trying other things, yeah, know, of other cask types, and and just playing with the process as well to see. So we're fortunate in Ireland because we can play around. We have single malt. We've got pot still. Uh, obviously, Dingle up till now has been triple distilled, but the the peated spirit I made was double distilled. Okay. So we've we've lots of permutations that we can do. We've got a, a little bit more of a lenient policy on which types of cask we use. Okay. So they do not always have to be made from oak. Mm -hmm. So there's so there's lots of different things to explore, but to counter that, I need to be careful as well. I don't want to have I don't want to go into the warehouse and have such a mixture of casks that you cannot form anything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, it's all all very bitty, and and you so you need you need a bit of a structure there and a bit of a a backbone to 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 work with, and then you can play around on the edges. And would you say that the backbone of Dingle lies more on the sherry cask or more on the? bourbon cask because this is predominantly sherry yes i think so i mean we're not <laughs> it's difficult to know what everybody else does uh, yeah, but sure. we do fill a high percentage of sherry casks around about 40 percent of what we fill is, is sherry and obviously they've all been first fill casks that's bringing an intensity and a richness to dingle but bourbon forms a good you know a good part as well port around about 10 percent port casks oh, wow. we fill and then others you know wine rum i'm very excited to take 
a little stroll with you to to your playground because this is something for the wider audience and you created a batch like there was created a batch series mm -hmm. there is something about to happen with it. it it's not being continued there's one last bottle and then it's this one this this chapter ends or we're having one last hurrah on the, on both sides the single malt and the the pot still okay because we're on the single malt mm -hmm. uh, well, um I actually have the bottle here <laughs> the single malt has reached the batch number six now okay so this was released just last week Okay. So it's very, very fresh out of the distillery. And it's been nice, you know, the batch series has been great for people to follow the, the journey of Dingle and, and see the whiskey develop because the, the first release was back in 2016. Okay. So you're back then you're talking three, four year old whiskey mm -hmm. in the there. You know, we're now at six, seven year old in the batches. So people have seen it develop, they've seen all the different cask types being used, predominantly bourbon and sherry combinations, but we have introduced port previously with, mm -hmm. with combined with bourbon, and we've also introduced Madeira casks in oh, wow. batch five. But this one, batch six, is the first, which only contains one cask type. Okay. And it's been fully matured in tawny port casks. So you can maybe see the color. lovely deep color mm -hmm. that the, the port casks have infused. So, again, that demonstrates the maturity of Dingle, of where we're, where we're at now, that we are able to release a whiskey with one cask type. The reason for combining cask types previously was really to get a bit of flavour from each mm -hmm. different cask type to to help each other, almost like a, a blend, but not. Yeah. Obviously it's still single malt, but you are blending different cask types to, to bring something to the, the party. Whereas this one, now, um, my feeling is we're now at a stage where, no, our you poor casks can stand on their own, our bourbon casks can stand on their own. So so you'll start to see more releases from, from Dingle that will be one type. single cask type. and. It becomes easier to understand as well. Yeah. So, but I'll let you have a little the hold of that, and I think we we can have a little taste as well. There's like there are very great illustrations on the back. What is the story? Because is this goes this back to the, the icon, like the the festive festive. Uh yes, our it, it's a, a long story, which I'll I'll try and be concise. <laughs> but our, our our founder of the distillery is mm -hmm. a gentleman called Oliver Hughes. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2016. But it was his passion for Dingle. Even long before the distillery started in 2012, he would visit Dingle on his holidays and brought family down. So Oliver was had strong connections with Dingle. And when he, he always w wanted to build a distillery, he, the mm -hmm. previous business, which is still going, is it was a brewery and, okay. and pubs in Dublin. But he had this great idea to, to build a distillery. And the easy option would have been to build it in Dublin, where they had their yeah. infrastructure. Exactly. But no, he, he, he knew <laughs> it had to be, well, he knew Dingle had a special place. Mm -hmm. And uh, the artwork on the back is, is a local artist. Liam O'Neill? Liam O'Neill, yes. So he's, and he, again, we have what we call founding fathers yeah. who invested in the distillery mm -hmm. at the beginning. They bought casks yes. or gave money <laughs> to the distillery. Yeah. And Liam O'Neill is a, is a founding father. But he's, he's also a very... Very well talented. Yeah, artist, really we'll try to, to add the picture in so that people can see it at home. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, like, you moved to Dingle, mm -hmm. the, the town, because maybe not, not very clear for everyone, but Dingle is the distiller name for the distillery, but it's named after the town it's founded in. That's right, Dingle Town. It's, it's a small fishing town uh -huh. on what is called the, the Dingle Peninsula. So the peninsula stretches out into the Atlantic. It mm -hmm. takes you about an hour to drive from, from the start of the peninsula to get to the, the far tip. Okay. So it's uh, and there are only two roads in and out. So okay. You, so once you're on the peninsula, once you're in Dingle, you're y you're there. you're there to stay. Okay. For for a while anyway, and uh, it's a beautiful part of the world. You've got lovely beaches. You've got the mountains as well, mm -hmm. and uh, you can capture all of Ireland in that one one peninsula. place. Beautiful place. And do you miss Scotland, or do you say like, no, I'm I'm so living life on the, to the fullest in this little peninsula yeah. on this little peninsula? No, I mean obviously. We've had strange times recently, and, and mm -hmm. that made you think about everything. Yeah. But no, I think we're both happy. My wife obviously moved with me and works. Okay. I, th I would say she wor well, supposedly works for me at the distillery, but I think it's the other way around. <laughs> so yes, yeah, no. So it was a, a joint decision. Obviously, you don't uh, you don't do it on your don't own. Go that far. No. <laughs> far west. Because basically, if you jump in the sea and start swimming, you're yeah. you'll end up in New York. So that's how, mm. how far across we are. And how is could you like describe Dingle? Like, how is it to like paint me a picture? Like, if we would visit Dingle the distillery like in person instead of sitting here. Okay. So Dingle has a population of 
around about 2,000 people. Okay. If you can imagine a town near you that size. Yeah. Uh, it's a fishing town, and it's positioned on a bay, Dingle Bay. It's a very popular tourist town, so... Mm-hmm. The 2,000 population, normal natural population, probably becomes around 50,000. If people do, do come to Dingle, it's a great weekend place to visit, but mm-hmm. people will come for longer as well. There are uh, around about 30 pubs in Dingle, so that, that describes yeah, okay. <laughs> what the social life is like. Uh-huh. So it, it packs a big punch for a small village that has so much going on for it but it also because it's on the edge of the peninsula it's still retained its its charm its style you've still got the old traditional butchers and bakers and even a candlestick maker we've got one oh. of them so so yeah it, it, it's like winding the clock back 30 40 years really interesting i'm t- grabbing a glass because yes. the batch number six yes so this is the i say it's a full maturation 24 just checking behind me to see it's 46.5 Yes. So that's, that's all where the batches, the, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why the... Like that. Okay. And say so this will be the final one. So there will be no batch seven. Okay. Uh, so some people, you know, who followed the, the, the Dingle journey, mm-hmm. you know, will have all the batches right through from one to, to six. So it's a, it's a nice thing to have. But it's nicer to it's have in a glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even nicer to open it and drink it. So. And that's the great thing. We're starting to see more people actually drink o- Dingle because the, okay. the problem with new distilleries, uh, at the beginning, their first release or couple of releases become very collectible mm-hmm. because generally they're, they're small scale releases so it's nice to get beyond that and and just be recognized as a distillery and a whiskey that you'll open and drink rather than put in the cupboard and if we're it. looking like at these these extreme bottles of whiskey that are f- a few thousand uh, pounds to to a bottle is it something that you say like i really appreciate doing stuff like that like making a 35 or 40 or 50 year old dingle is it something that you would consider doing you know it's it's nice to do you know in my previous at glen murray i was fortunate to be able to work with some very old whiskies mm-hmm. and yeah it, just the history of them because it's the, it's it's not it wasn't my whiskey it was my predecessor Ed Dodson, uh, the distillery manager, master distiller for Glen Murray, you know he laid down the spirit, or even mm-hmm. the manager before him. So you're 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 really there's so much history in that that mm-hmm. bottle uh, when you when you bottle out an old whiskey. But uh, from a finance money point of view, you know I I have no issue with people spending that kind of money if yeah. or or keeping the bottles if they want to. You know you do you do you what do you, you, yeah. you do what you want in life. You you mm-hmm. spend your money on what you like, and uh-huh. you know some people buy big flash cars, and other people you know buy. And 50 year old whiskies yeah. and and yeah exactly okay. so who who's to tell you mm-hmm. what to do and back to the to the, the pod cask it smells amazing i haven't mm-hmm. had it a sip yet <laughs> um i've jumped in sorry yeah no 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but gu- guide me through is because there's very there's a lot to unpack in here this is this is, isn't it's one to take mm-hmm. time over it's yeah. not one to drink during an interview you, you kind of need to no. sit with it <laughs> uh-huh. and and uh, the, yes, there are so many nuances of flavour. You've got mm-hmm. the the fruity character, the wine, sweet wine character coming through, and you know, you've got that. You've obviously got the traditional dingle spirit character, which you know, this this whiskey around about seven years old, six to seven years old. So you still retain some of that lovely spirit, the fresh freshness of the spirit, the citrusy side of things as well. But uh, it's it's all about balance. You know, you can you can put whiskey or spirit into casks, and the cask can overpower the spirit. Uh, or the other way around, if the cask has been used too often, then it won't. But it will never yeah. get get anything back from the wood. So, so working with good casks is, is great. You're you're giving yourself the best mm-hmm. best start, best o- opportunity, and then it's just a case of just trying to choose that sweet spot when to release. Because this whiskey we're releasing this now, come back. I obviously, still have some port casks in the warehouse. Yeah. Don't use them all. Um, yeah. So come back. It'd be nice to come back in six years' time and maybe release a full maturation port. Yeah. And then you're comparing. There'll be two different whiskies. Yes. But there are very interesting spices in the aftertaste. This is so, there's so much going on. And then I'm sitting here and I'm like, I need to do f- two things. I need to focus on what you're telling me. But this, is, this, is, this isn't an interview whiskey. It isn't at all. Uh, it is very great. Let me see. There is uh, not all the bottles, I believe. There were measurements. And I believe on the core, it is like on the side. There are these, these purity the, yes, it's the depths. Not, it's not measurements uh, somebody made a joke saying is that do you do you drink down to the line each time you go into the bottle <laughs> okay yeah uh, which you can do if, if uh, that's that's what you want to do but, <laughs> but no it's it's to demonstrate that we we have our water sources from the well mm-hmm. which uh, i believe is 240 feet 
it says on the bottle. Right, so so it, it must be true. It must be true, yeah. I've not been down to, to, <laughs> to test whether it is that deep, but it is certainly deep. And we, mm-hmm. you know, so it's all about the Dingle story. Everything's local. Um, okay. You know, we try, we, we do everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say we do everything as efficiently as we should or could, but you know, we obviously make our own spirit, which sure. in Ireland, at the moment, you will see distilleries releasing whiskey that they've bought in and, and release, which is you know, a way of keeping their business model going. But Dingle have never gone down that route. Okay. We we're fortunate with a very successful gin and vodka. So mm-hmm. so they were the, the mainstays in the early years, but we've been lucky to do that. And you say like you, you try to do as much yourself, but maybe not as efficient. Is it literally like from grain to bottling to labeling? Is everything done at the facility, or how Every, is everything's done at the facility? And and just to to give an example, I don't know if people understand the whiskey making process. Uh-huh. The first process, first stage is is mashing in, in yeah. the mash tun. Yeah. Now most mash tuns have a, a rake inside and yeah. an arm that will clear the grain at the end, the mm-hmm. spent grain. But ours d- doesn't. <laughs> so our guy, our lads, as we call them, and and lads in Ireland are male or female. Yeah. D- okay. D- you can be you can, you can be a, you are a lad. We're all lads in Ireland. Uh, they have to jump in to the mash tun and dig out our one ton mash. So okay. you can imagine this is well, the temperature is 60 degrees and you've got one ton of hot steaming grain to Dig out. shovel out a hole <laughs> in the side of the mash tun. That's probably the best example of what we do. And, and, and is it because it, it, it feels the most authentic? Is it is it Does it feel good to do it this way or has it a practical I, I, reason? I think the lads, again, probably would, would not... Would <laughs> Disagree? Be quite happy never to do it ever again, but... It, it's more circumstance. It, when they built the distillery, you know, we had no big funding behi- behind us. Mm-hmm. Let's say there was the Founding Fathers program where people invested. Mm-hmm. So money was not, there was not a limit, unlimited amount of money. Yeah. And uh, they looked at the mash tun can be a very expensive piece of equipment, yeah. even if it's small. You know, you could be looking at two hundred, three hundred thousand euros. Yeah, okay. uh, but our wooden mash tun probably cost twenty thousand euros. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was. It was more out of necessity, but it's it's part of the distillery now, and I won't say we'll have that mash done forever, but it, the, the <laughs> at least for a few, there'll always be the memories of the. It's not here to stay. It's not. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no, it'll probably get converted into a hot tub or something cool. like that, which would be very pretty, yeah. No. Pretty good. Is it like have you been hands on with like every single part yourself? Uh, I do get get involved. It's that kind of uh-huh. place, you know. You you have to dive in and uh, help, but I think. <laughs> Most people, I'm, I'm probably a hindrance when I get involved. <laughs> you also bottle on site mm-hmm. and labels. Like, is it hand labeled? Is we it? Do, we have a you know we bottle. Yeah. We, so we, we obviously we make the spirit. We fill it into cask. Mm-hmm. We mature at the distillery or just close by the distillery. We then prepare the spirit for bottling and we bottle. So we. So we have a we have a an automatic labeler as such, mm-hmm. but the the bottles are filled by hand. They put onto the the filler and taken off, and the corks are pushed in by hand. Oh. Capsule put on. So we're we're that's where I say we we we're not as efficient as we could be. Could but be. our ethos is that we're seen as a quite an important employer in Dingle. Dingle is a very seasonal town. Mm-hmm. So for us to be operating the distillery 365 days a year, we we offer employment to mm-hmm. to people that that wasn't there mm-hmm. before. So and on. Like employment for how many people? Like how many people are involved in at, at Dingle? At the peak time, over well, if you look at the wider Dingle with our sales, marketing, and mm-hmm. and and people, you probably around about thirty people involved. Oh, wow, maybe maybe more. You know, when we're doing lots of tours and visitors to the distillery, yeah, yeah, you could have thirty, thirty-five staff involved in the organization, which is big for a. Yeah, for big for a small distillery, that, and also for like big for a very small town. If I'm exactly yeah, because the, well, like everything, everything's moving on, and the tra- traditional industries are not as strong as they were. You know, the fishing is is fading away, and uh, so there's not much else. There's agriculture, farming, but again, that's becoming more or less labour intensive. So, so there's less opportunities. So it's good. It's good for good for the youngsters mainly. You know. We see them come to the distillery, and they don't stay. You know, they 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 do their two or three years, and then they'll maybe move on or travel, mm-hmm. uh, travel the world. They quite often, go to the states and work. So, so you're, you, it's nice just to give people a, a step on the working ladder, and then they they can go off and do their their own thing as well. And this is very complex. This is this has this mm. is a very great whiskey to sit and enjoy. But if somebody would step up to you and say, like, I had batch six, I liked it. It was very good, but I want something more. I want something more explosive, more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And you'll always get that person that, yeah. that, that uh, 
where, it's, where it's nothing is enough. It must always nothing, be more. And an insatiable appetite for alcohol. Some people, you know, that, <laughs> we have a that we have a, a group in Ireland, and they're called the Cask Strength Crusade. Okay. So they 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 beat their chest and say that everything should be cask strength. And, and is should it? Uh, no, not for me. No. It, you know, it's it it. For me, cask strength whiskies will always be uh, unique, and and for those that that understand them, because mm-hmm. it's not to everybody's taste. They're very very strong, and you have to add water, and it, it becomes quite a tricky mm-hmm. experience to uh, to drink the whiskey rather than just sit back sitting and back enjoy enjoying it. and having a glass. But there's yeah. a place for cask strength, but but not for the whole world. We'd be fall falling about <gasps> dangerously if we if everyone would enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But walk me through. I I've seen people. Malting, mashing, I've, I've seen everything. There's just one thing I never saw in person, and that is somebody actually blending different casks together to make one product. How does that work for you? Like, how is it? Yeah, we are, we are still quite very small scale. Our batch releases or our even core expression, Dingle Single Malt, we, we make it up in around about 20 to 30 cask batches. So there's, there's not that many casks going in, but before that, what we'll do, and I'll do, is sample each cask, and then then you can play around in a almost a laboratory scale. Mm-hmm. So you you play with the the quantities and adjust and, and see what kind of recipe you you want to go for, mm-hmm. and then you jump ahead and you do it on the the large scale. Okay, and then reassess. So you maybe maybe tweak it slightly. So you, with the the single malt expression, you know, I said sixty one sherry, thirty nine bourbon. You may be very close to that, mm-hmm. but you might think. No, it's maybe slightly lacking on the sherry, or maybe the sherry's a little too dominant. So you just you just add one more bourbon cask to it and and play that way. But it's like if you're saying like I'm playing with, you are actually playing with a whole cask. You generally are. <laughs> you can part part work with part casks, but but when you're up to that quantity, generally you can you can work with the whole cask. And as I said, you're not there. We're not creating blended whiskey. No, 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 no. Blended whiskey consumers are looking for absolute same thing every time, mm-hmm. little variation. With single malt, you you're allowed a little bit of leeway room. because that's the nature of single malt. No two barrels will be the same. So creating, you can never create the same whiskey again. Is it so? But are these types like if I take two casks and I fill them with exactly the same spirits and exactly the same place in the warehouse, can they change this dramatically? It wouldn't be dramatic. It would be subtle. Okay. But even two bourbon casks, which bourbon casks are, the, are probably the most consistent cask to work with. You know, they're uniform size, they're generally uniformly made, mm-hmm. they're charred on the inside to a uniform standard. Ride. But all these things have variables. Mm-hmm. And you will, you know, six bourbon casks filled on one day, come back ten years later, and there'll, there'll be slight differences. Okay. Might be sweeter on the one, might be sweeter on the nose, one might be drier, one might just have a bit more vanilla. So they're, they're all subtle. But then, when you mix, start to mix more casks together, then well, it you're averages. smoothing out any yeah. uh, edges that, that may be there, mm. and uh, you know, the whiskey becomes more uniform. And that's basically your job. That's what uh, you are. That's it, really. It's to it's to get it right at the beginning. So make the spirit and put it into the casks that I think we'll need, mm-hmm. uh, and then at the end, select the casks to make the the best whiskies we can. Okay, I'm excited. We don't have water by hand. That's the only uh, downside currently, but I've heard like you have been like Dingle has been making the festival bottling for here for like whiskey, uh, whiskey and romance, and it's the first Irish festival bottling in the Netherlands ever. So that's f- quite exciting. It's at cask strength, so it's a, a, a hefty beast to say at least. Mm-hmm. What, what what can we expect for like this festival bottling? How did you go on like picking a cask? How did you how did this happen? So this yeah, as you say, this is. The I didn't know it was the first Irish whiskey festival bottling, but it's the first for Dingle to do mm-hmm. something like this. Mm-hmm. You know, we have released our batches, we're releasing our Dingle single malt, but this is our first venture into a a very limited release. There's only 300 bottles. Oh. And uh, not that it adds to the taste, but it's the first one that has my signature on it as well. Okay. So it's signed on the front. Um, but no, apart from that, it's, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure to do something like this because it attracts a different bit of attention for the distillery and mm-hmm. you know, creates creates interest in, in a different way. So t- to to create the whiskey or to, to select the whiskey that's inside the, the bottle, it was I kind of made a decision that it would be nice to let people taste the the single malt mm-hmm. release in its natural form, cask okay. strength. Okay. So this is what, what you have in here. So this is, again, the combination of Pedro Jimenez bourbon cask, but at a cask strength of 60.8. 
six percent. Okay, so it's something to prepare for. It's some, yes, it, again, <laughs> this is one. You know, I said you drink your whiskey how you like, but this is probably one I would try and advise people add how some to water. Drink it. Uh, definitely add some water. You know, the it's uh, it, it's sixty point six. It, it's it's hefty, and 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 uh, whiskies at that strength can remain a little bit closed, a little bit tight because you're, there is just so much alcohol effect in there. So if you can, you know, water will will open it up, and you can you can again you can hit your own sweet spot mm. as to when when you like to drink it. You'll you'll never add so much water to bring it down to the four six point three. You you just never would. You know you're. You're starting at a high lead, but you may, you know, you'll, you'll certainly take it down a few percentage points. And the water, as I say, opens up the whiskey, but uh, have, a, have a look at that. So it's 300 bottles precise? Exactly 300, yes. Numbered as well. Oh, and it's all done by hand? All done by hand. And uh, yeah, and uh, is it the only bit I did by hand was signing the labels. And you did sign every 300 oh, labels? I did sign 300. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> but again, my wife, she, she wrote the, the bottle numbers and the strength on, so she had a bigger job and labelled it and did everything. I will put it in next to the collection of what we tried today. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm going to dive in. Dive in, in. Yep. It has exactly the same, like the, 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 sh- like the fruity notes I'm getting from the, from the single malt. I'm getting that as well, but it, this is so much more aggressive. So much more intense, you know. Yeah. It's it's almost if you t- well, just think of it in concentration terms, you know, you're you're almost half half more. as strong again, you know. So so yeah. you, so you, uh, I think for me the the sherry influence is probably even more dominant mm-hmm. than than previously. It really comes through, and obviously the, the color as well is is so so, so rich. It's basically all, everything at Dingle is non chill filtered. Natural color. Yes, yes. Non-chill filtered natural color. And obviously this is now cask strength. So we'd, everything you see in the glass mm-hmm. is coming from the distillery or the cask. Oh, wow. So okay. that's your, you know, your, it's distillery spirit made, obviously. And then it's, it's, it's down to the casks after that. And the climate. The climate in Dingle is, is very mild. Okay. And um, it, uh, the whiskey matures well because of that. It's, you know, coming from Scotland, I w- you'd go into the warehouse in the winter. Mm-hmm. It could be s- sub zero for mm-hmm. for a few weeks. Okay. And the whiskey just does not interact with the wood at that temperature. So okay. in Dingle, we you know it doesn't drop below five degrees in the winter. Oh wow! Okay. It is more consistent. I would say so. It's certainly maturing at a, a faster rate than than in Scotland. So that's okay. that's one up for Irish whiskey. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Uh, it all helps us though because again releasing whiskies at younger age you want to give it the best shot and it's the first full casks the mm-hmm. the consistent maturation it, it all comes together hopefully in the taste I will try it yes Watch. but uh, tread carefully yeah. <laughs> the taste is I was like okay this is very surprisingly mild mm-hmm. and then the aftertaste After the killer. everything yeah. is okay because I kept that in my mouth quite a while yeah. and it was very sweet and yes. very tasty at the front end and then, and then the finish swallow, it's like whoa right it's, then it goes up through you it's not, no I, I shouldn't you should not drink this uh, at 12 o'clock in the, mo- in the afternoon no, well <laughs> it'll be a short day for you if you do do you all may, is that, yeah, you, yeah. May be, you may be in your bed for tea time at, at this rate but how is the best way to experience dingle is it actually visiting the distillery or is it taking a bottle home and just sitting comfy at home will it also transport you a bit you know i think if you can at least visit dingle once in your life yeah because then that is in your head the memory is there and Mm -hmm. you know drinking whiskey is all about memories and who you drank it with or where and Mm -hmm. what time so if you can if you can get to Dingle and experience just the the town, the, town. the peninsula, visit the distillery itself as well, then you can sit at home. And then it's and just remember, okay, getting is soaked there a in sto- the rain in Dingle. <laughs> is there a story like if you if you sit here like in the Netherlands, it's not the same as in Ireland. But if you sit here with a glass of Dingle, like what is the first memory that springs to mind of you and and, and Dingle? It's a good question. I think it's probably going to the, one of the local pubs. Mm-hmm. Sitting in there and chatting to the the locals because they're, they're so so friendly and they'll they'll generally give you a, a lots of stories. They're great storytellers. Okay. So you don't need to speak. You, you can just <laughs> you can you just have to listen okay. and you you'll get their whole life story in in a pint almost. So yeah, I think it's it's that it's, it's just that close community mm-hmm. where everybody's friendly and everybody's welcoming and mm-hmm. they'll, they'll help you out no matter what you need. And you like now you've been living there for two years, two plus. Years. Two years, yeah. Two years, and you feel like okay, this is you are so welcome that it's 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 home. It is home, yeah, yeah. I look at myself as a whiskey, you know. So I was matured in Scotland for twenty five years, and <laughs> I finished in Ireland. So I'm, 
finished in Ireland for two years plus, hopefully a bit longer. So I'm really the best of both worlds, I think. I think that that is a very great way to to, to end this uh, conversation. Graham, thank you so much for having a chat. Hopefully, uh, everyone who is uh, watching or listening this, they can uh, can visit you at the distillery, see you uh, sign another uh, 300 plus labels uh, for a new. Uh, Hopefully a new uh, bottling. Yeah, no, it'd be great. Uh, open invitation there to anybody to come and see us and share share Dingle whiskey in, in, in person. Dingle. And and you know, hopefully you some of you will follow the Dingle journey because we're only on the first ladder or the rung mm. of the ladder. We've got a, a long few way steps to go. to go yet. So it's it's gonna be an interesting journey. Is there something that you could tease, like something that if you say like keep your eyes open for? Oh, gee, they keep your eyes open for. I I think it's gonna uh, it'll be Dingle with a bit of smoke. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to smoking matter. All right. I, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it's three to five years. You say I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm able to wa- wait for that. But Excellent. Graham, thank you so much for your time. And nope. uh, I'm nope. going to sit back and enjoy uh, the glasses that I'm still having. And uh, I wish you a great uh, stay in the Netherlands. Thank you. Thank you. Slange. Slange. And we're back in the studio mm-hmm. again with Lucia. Hello. How are you? Good, good. How Did are you, you enjoy the talk with Graham? Very much. And you are still enjoying your glass of Dingle? Oh my god, such a drop. Yes, we enjoyed the talk with Graham a lot. And thank you so much for listening to this special episode, our fully English episode about Dingle. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you like this episode, share it with a friend, put it on Facebook, Instagram, or just send a pigeon to someone. Smoke signal. Smoke signal, also a yeah. very good idea. Um, l- if you like this content, Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Elements of Whiskey. Here we post like reviews and also teasers for new episodes. Mm-hmm. So when there's pretty a next pictures of or pretty pictures. So if you really like this content, f- give us a follow, right? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, can be so easy. Yeah. Can be so damn easy. And we will be back next week in Dutch with our regular scheduled episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And or listening. And or listening. And yes. or listening. And we'll be back in the future with some more content for you guys, completely in English. If you like this and would like to see more on a regular basis, just send us a message. And uh, perhaps we can do some more for you guys. Yeah, hopefully. Very Thank cool. you so much to Graham for having this talk. Thank you so much to Whiskey and Rum at Sea for having us there to, to host the, the whole conversation. And thank you, Lucia, for sitting here and enjoying this dingle. Thank you, Matt. All right. Thank you so much. Until next time.